Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Verse 29 from the Amplified Version. And if you belong to Christ, are in him who is Abraham's seed, then you are Abraham's offspring and spiritual heirs according to promise. This afternoon, or rather this evening, we shall be looking at the topic, God, our promise keeper. God, our promise keeper. All through the Bible, we read of the promises of God to mankind. In Genesis chapter 17, from verse 1 following, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will multiply you exceedingly. We read of the covenant God had with Abraham. That covenant was based on a promise. I will establish my covenant with you. What is a promise? A promise is a verbal commitment from one person to another, agreeing to do or not to do something in future. A promise is an assured statement. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews in chapter 6, verses 13 to 19, encouraged Christians to persevere because the divine promises are valid. For when God made his promise to Abraham, he swore by himself since he had no one greater by whom to swear. And also it was that he, Abraham, having waited long and endured patiently, realized and obtained in the birth of Isaac as a pledge of what was to come, what God has promised. So God desires that all of us should have his promise fulfilled in our lives. If therefore we belong to Christ, we are the original owners of the promise. The promise was made on our behalf. What are the promises of God to us? Number one, God has promised, I will be with you. Always. In Haggai chapter 2 verse 4. He said unto Zerubbabel, Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, say the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, said the Lord, and walk. For I am with you, said the Lord of hosts. God has promised to be with us always. It's a promise of God. While Jesus was leaving his disciples, ascending into heaven, he said to them, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, Teach all the people you come in contact with to observe all the things whatever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So we have the promise of God being with us. In the midst of the things happening around us, God is with us. Number two, we have the promise of life. In Malachi chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, God said, Then you shall know that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him, one of life and peace, and I gave them to him that he might fear me. So he feared me and was reverent before my name. We have the covenant of the promise of life, life in the land of the living, life in all things we do. God has promised to give us life. So no matter what we face, there is life. And once there is life, there is hope. Number three, we have the covenant, the promise of uncommon favor, the promise of uncommon favor. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8, the Bible says, Noah found grace, uncommon favor, in the sight of God. Favor is that is not common, which suggests that there are some favors that are common. 
So if we have the promise of uncommon favor, we are talking about the favor that is not seen or witnessed on a daily basis. The favor that is not seen or witnessed on a daily basis, uncommon favor. There are people that are favored day and night, but there are certain favors that come to you and you will know it's uncommon. But before uncommon favor comes our way, God will search our heart and see what we can, we can do and what we cannot do in future. God knew that Noah will be obedient in the future. He knew that Abraham will be obedient in the future. So he gave them uncommon favor for blessings. Praise the Lord. So God is a promise keeper. He has promised to be with us always. He has promised us life. He has also promised us uncommon favor. He will not go back. When we have uncommon favor in our lives, it produces supernatural promotion and increase. In Genesis chapter 39 verse 21, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. And he gave him favor in the sight of the keepers of the prison. Uncommon favor produces supernatural promotion and increase. Uncommon favor brings restoration. Even when the enemy has stolen everything from us. Exodus chapter 3 verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go that they shall not go empty handed. They shall not go empty handed. It brings supernatural restoration of everything the enemy have stolen. Uncommon favor brings honor in the midst of our adversaries. In Exodus chapter 11 verse 3. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servant, and the sight of his people. Uncommon favor brings honor in the midst of adversities and adversaries. Uncommon favor produces increased assets. In Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 23, And of Naphtali he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full of the blessing of the Lord, possess the west and the south. Unformal favor produces increased assets. Whenever God favors us, He allows us to win the battles that we cannot even fight because God fights for us. Uncommon favor gives us victory in battles that we cannot fight because God fights for us. Psalms 44 and verse 3. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, the light of your countenance, because you favored them. When God favors us, we win battles because he fights for us. But we must pay the price to get his uncommon favor. We must pay the price of relationship with God. We must have a personal day-to-day relationship with God. If we must get this uncommon favor, we must pay the price of righteousness. We must pay the price of obedience to the word of the Lord. He said, if you obey, you eat the fruit of the land. The price of obedience to the word of God. And finally, we must pay the price of thankfulness in all things. We must give thanks to the Lord our God. We give Him thanks because He is faithful. We give Him thanks because He is a promise keeper. We give Him thanks because He has sent us again to the end of another month. God is faithful. So we appreciate Him today. He has promised He will never ever fail. Let's put our trust in Him. He is not a man that He should lie. What He says He will do. That is what he will do. Let us pray. Can you take some moments and appreciate God for his faithfulness? Thank God for his promises in our lives, in our families, in our going out and our coming in. Can you thank God for being, for being a promise keeper, a God that will never change, a God that is always faithful to his ways and his words. 
and we thank God for his goodness upon us as a people. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. We give you praise. We glorify your name. You are worthy of all praise and honor. Thank you for your promises to us, your children. The promise of life and not of death. The promise of increase and not of decrease. The promise of protection. The promise of guidance. The promise of your Holy Spirit to lead us. We bless you. We thank you for the promise to always be there for us. You have been there for us. You will not change. And that is why you are God. Blessed be your holy name. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for River State. We thank you for your promises. All the promises you have made for us as a people. We acknowledge and stand by it. Because we know, O oh Lord, your promises will surely come to pass. They are yea and amen. Blessed be your holy name. We commit this state, O oh God, into your hands. Standing on your promises, you say you will give us peace. We ask the heavenly Father, may the promise of your peace rest upon River State. May the promise of your faithfulness rest upon River State. May the promise of your glory rest upon River State. In the name of Jesus, Lord, if your peace is in us and on us, you will give us direction, direction to fulfillment of your will. We pray you raise, O God, your people, the governor, all that walk with him, that, Lord, they shall walk in the unity of your will. In the name of Jesus, Father, we ask that the hand of the enemy shall be removed from this state, the river state shall dwell in the peace of our Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray for our families. You've made individual promises to us. You've made corporate promises to us as a covenant fellowship. You've made family promises to us. And because you are not a man that you should lie, we know, Lord, whatever you promise us will surely come to pass. So we pray this day, let your will be done in our lives. Let your way be done in our lives. Let your will be done in your, our lives. Let every word you have made concerning us, Father, come to reality. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the month of July that is coming to an end. Lord, we pray for the month of August. It shall be a month of rest. It shall be a month of new beginning. We will begin with new zeal and new strength. It shall be a month that you shall visit us with your august blessings. Unmerited favor shall be our portion. You have promised us uncommon favor. So shall it be upon us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. We exalt you among the nations. We declare your healing upon everyone, anyone that is sick. Let your healing power come. In the name of Jesus, lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us, and glorify yourself in us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We will continue to worship our God, and His name will be exalted in us. We expect again next Thursday to be with us in this covenant fellowship. God bless you. As we say the grace together, we would like us to take this closing song from Nathaniel Bassi, Abba, Father. God is our Father and is a promise keeper. Let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now evermore. Amen. God bless you. Oh